Hey everybody, it's your favorite reconstructionist, Eric Brown and Phil Relly, and welcome to episode number 28 of the one and only show, bringing you tips and tricks to working vehicle collision cases from the best experts in the industry every Wednesday. Today's episode is Don't Be Tofu, Take a Stand. So grab your expert angle coffee mug and settle in at three, two, one, off we go. Every year, traffic crashes claim the lives of over a million people and account for over $500 billion of injuries around the world. A small select group of people from police to attorneys to expert investigators are tasked with getting justice for the victims, protecting the rights of involved parties, and ensuring the story is told accurately and honestly. Unfortunately, we believe that is an impossible task without the right team of experts. If you agree, then keep on listening for actionable tips from leading experts across various industries that you can start taking today to elevate your professional game. If you disagree, then tune in anyway and let us convince you with our ideas. We are Eric Brown and Phil Rally, and this is Crash Tech, the expert angle. Welcome back to the show, guys. Crash Tech, the expert angle podcast is brought to you by Crash Tech Reconstruction Services. If you have an accident that you need answers for or you think the other side has it wrong, Crash Tech can help. Connect with us at www.crashtechreconstruction.com to submit your case for a free review. So guys, we have a super exciting show for you guys today. And it's exciting in a couple different reasons. One, Phil, my typical counterpart, is not with us today. And that's always exciting and a good day whenever he's not with us. So that's, uh, that's always fun. But in his place, I have brought in one of the OGs of Crash Tech to help me help me co-host the show. So I have brought Mike Carpenter in. He's one of our reconstructionists. He actually started with me on day one and was with me when I founded, I think, our first case. Yeah, I think yeah. that, that motorcycle case out in the uh, cornfield. Yep. And uh, so he was he was with me from day one and uh, has since had to move on. But he's here for a special purpose today. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit with that also. But in addition, we have another awesome guest for you guys. And so we brought in the number one morning talk show radio host. If you are from Ohio, I guarantee you know who this person is because I just found out actually his number one rating was he was number one with the demographic of everybody from 12 till dead. (laughs) Till dead. I like that. Till dead. 12 12 till dead. dead. And uh, with a 30%, uh, basically at any given time that 30% of the listening audience was listening to him. That's crazy. That's unbelievable. So we have Pat DeLuca on the show today, the one and only, like I said, if you guys are from Northeast Ohio, I guarantee you know DeLuca from the morning show. And he is with us today because I want to talk about something incredibly special, I would say today. And, and so these two guys are here with me because I think they're masters at this. Okay. I want to talk about how recently the entire world, it seems, has become vanilla and plain. And we are too afraid to say anything or engage in anything or have our own opinions or be authentic or be ourselves or be a person. And, and everybody's just kind of gliding along until, and, and I think I described it earlier, but Mike likes this because he, he's a fan of this food. I'm like, we're, we've become tofu. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're just like <laughs> these gray square blocks with no flavor. I am a, I am a fan of the food. So, so Pat, I mean, the reason I brought you on is because, man, anybody that listened to your radio show knows that you never had a problem ever speaking your opinion. And this is probably the first episode of our podcast that I'm actually going to have to mark explicit. So <laughs> now, listen, I can behave myself. I, I, I was able to slide by the FCC rules for 15 years. So, no, so I, can, barely, I can behave barely. myself. <laughs> that's true. So welcome to the show, first of all. And do I, I really appreciate you taking your time, uh, you know, on a Wednesday to come on and, and spend some time with us, man, and, and help us kind of get this message out there. Because like I said, I think, you know, and tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me what both you guys think, right? Because Mike comes from the law enforcement background. Actually, just recently retired. Congratulations. Thanks, brother. Right? Hell yeah. And uh, so just retired from law enforcement. And, you know, Pat, you coming from the 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 whole public eye and, and yep. radio and everything else. I mean, you're, uh, you're yep. co- constantly under scrutiny. But tell me right. if I'm wrong and off base that the most important thing to people when they're dealing with police or they're dealing with the insurance companies or they're dealing with attorneys or they're dealing with experts or anything, the most important thing to these people is that they're dealing with a real person. 
I, I, you know, you, you started uh, the podcast by, you know, kind of touting my achievements and I, I should let everybody know. I mean, there's a couple of things. Uh, I started in radio when I was 20 and I officially left radio when I was 35. Um, and it was, I, I kind of jokingly refer to myself as, as being retired from radio. Uh, and the reason that, that I tell people that is because the kind of radio that I want to do the authentic kind of radio, um, I don't think I could do anymore. Um, I agree. Yeah. I, the the uh, the zeitgeist has shifted to such a uh, a level that um, you know I I <laughs> I was told by my boss early on if I'm not getting angry letters from people or pissed off emails, you're not doing something right. Okay. Nowadays, you get an angry email or you get a couple of people upset at you, uh, even on social media, uh, cancel culture kicks in and you're done. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And, no, I mean, and, they'll, they'll tank a career in a heartbeat. Yeah. And, and so, you know, part of my success in radio uh, and, I, you know, it, it wasn't the Howard Stern of anything, but I was a big fish in a small pond for a while. And, and you know, I busted my my chops to get where I was. But the success was always attributed to being relatable. And the only way that you can be relatable is by being authentic. And one of the things that I feel that I always did well was – First of all, I wouldn't shy away from my opinions. I wouldn't be afraid to share with my audience uh, my opinion on any topic, whether it be, you know, something national or something local that happened. But I based the opinions that I had, in fact, I wouldn't just, you know, blurt out an opinion on something that I didn't right. think through before I put it on the air. And I would always allow people with differing opinions the opportunity to share those opinions, which is something today that seems kind of a lost art, regardless of the media sphere. Yeah. And so let me ask you this and, and tell me if I'm off base and, and Mike, I mean, chime in from, from a law enforcement perspective. And obviously for the, for the police officers listening, I know you have internal affairs and stuff. So you guys really have to watch a little more closely about what you're, what you're saying. And so when I say be authentic, right, I'm not saying be offensive. No, I'm saying be true to you, right? It's okay to have your own, to be your own person. And so, but I mean, Pat, tell me, you know, is, is this true or no? You know, that when I, when I first started this podcast and, and me and my, my co-host that, that normally is with me, Phil, we had a big conversation about this because he was like, dude, we can't say anything that would possibly offend anybody. Why? Why can't you? Right, exactly. Well, and so my point on that was, is I was like, well, here's the thing. You need to build fans. You need to be build people that like you. And the only way you're going to get people that love you is to also accept the fact that there are going to be people that hate you. Yeah, yeah, that's, because if that's, you try and please everybody, you're the tapioca pudding of the, the world. You know what I mean? Like, Well, yeah, and you're fake. And, you know, I don't have respect for fake people. Um, if you have an opinion and it's your honest to God, genuine opinion, and it's truly the way you feel, I'm going to respect that. I might not always agree with it, but I'll respect that. But if you're just bloviating just because you're trying to get a reaction from somebody, uh, I have no respect for you. And and that that is, you know, our 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 society as a whole has kind of we've gone vanilla in the one respect where everything that comes out of our mouths, whether it's on a podcast or whether you're a cop on the beat or whether you're, you know, a, a lawyer speaking to the press, everything that comes out of your mouth, you have to think now, how can that be used against you? Yeah. Right. How, how, how do you have to phrase things so that they won't come back to bite you? But on the other side of the coin, we have a lot more kind of infuriating speech out there. You have people that are throwing out one opinion one week to rile up 
whatever audience they're trying to rile up. But the next week, they're coming out with a contradictory opinion to rile up that same audience that seems to have forgotten the opinion from the week before. That's not authentic. Um, And I have no respect for people that uh, and, you know, even in in the Canton, Ohio market, um, I worked with some other uh, radio personalities that I had heated internal discussions with um, because they were being inauthentic and I didn't feel they were doing a service to their audience or to the station. Um, and quite frankly, I thought that they were making themselves look foolish. Um, and you know, I, I've gotten some things wrong. Uh, As I've aged, there are opinions that I've had in the past that have changed. Um, But one of the things that I always tried to do, I would never sugarcoat things. And anybody that listened to me would (laughs) would definitely agree with that. No, I would would put things out there, man. But I was I would always try to maintain a certain level of decorum. Uh, And even if. Somebody called me up, you know, I I took phone calls like crazy. I think um, (laughs) when I I was doing nights, because I started doing a night show, um, the reporter from the Canton Repository, Dan Kane, came in to to sit with me for an entire shift. And I was like 22, 23 years old. Uh, I took 300 phone calls. I disappeared because my monitors went off. There there we go. I took... (laughs) I took 300 phone calls in one five hour shift. Holy um, <laughs> yeah, I was very phone intensive. And when I would opine about an opinion, the way that I used to structure the show is typically it was structured in hour segments. So you, we'd have, you know, the kicker, which was the top of the hour story, which generally was, here's the situation, here's my opinion. And yeah. then for the remainder of the hour, we would take phone calls. Well, I, well, there were often I was I was called polarizing and polarizing means you've got kind of a 50 50 split. So I would have people that called with me and agreed with me, but I would find myself spending much less time on the phone with the people that agreed with me. And I would give much more time to the people that disagreed with me. And if they were if they, if they were pleasant and they had an educated opinion, we would have very good decorum and, you know, I'd let them say their piece. And I, I feel in the end, uh, regardless of the difference of opinion, uh, those people would respect me, even if we had a difference of opinion, Yeah, but a lot of times there were people that would call up and just, you know, use such language that I have to bleep every other word. But you know what? Uh, not- those, those same people, because you were real, those same people hated your ass, but they continued to listen to you. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's because you it were would- real. You, didn't, you weren't blowing smoke up any, anybody's ass. And I, I wouldn't fight with them. If people were vicious with me, I wouldn't fight with them. I would let them just go on and on and on and make themselves look like the fools that they are. Oh, I know. I, yeah. rem- I remember. The, the worst, though, would we like if we had a call on midnights and then I'd have to be up taking my girls to school in the morning and I'd be listening to your show and you're talking about the call that me and Mike were on the night before. And I'm like, this is some crap. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those, those are always the hard well, ones not to call in about but uh, you know you know here, here's the and and that's that was one of the biggest things that I, it took me time to learn um i having such an audience even before we got into this cancel culture thing that we found ourselves in um and being a local morning show host, so not syndicated, not sitting in a building in New York City, literally sitting in for WDJQ, sitting in a cornfield in Alliance, Ohio. Um, <laughs> it was it was I, I learned over time that sometimes things that I said would hurt people. And and I remember there was one story in particular Um I, I, Is that a I, tear in his eye? I think so. It's not a, it's not a tear in my eye. There, there was <laughs> this is the older, gonna, more mature DeLuca coming it out. It is definitely. 
I think uh, somebody's about my... to get an on-air apology from that... something he did ten years. Oh no 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 no. There there was there was a semi in-person apology. There was a former football player from Canton. I'm not going to name names, but he shot himself and killed himself while he was cleaning his gun, and it was a news story and. What we used to do on the show is we would do the news at the top of every hour. And typically, the last story in the news was a kicker story that I, that was, the story was put there for me to comment on. Right. And my point was if you don't know how to clean a gun without shooting yourself, you probably shouldn't own guns. And I literally said that. I mean, I was. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, yeah, it's hard. Not <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, who doesn't know that right. I don't own a firearm? I've gone through the concealed carry training, but I never actually bought a firearm. But I know that the first step in cleaning a weapon is to make sure that it's not loaded. Yeah. <laughs> and certainly, you never point the barrel at your face. <laughs> um, and and you know, I kind of went on like this. Um, and about a month later, uh, I was a Saturday and I had to do a remote, a two hour thing at a car dealership and the brother of this oh. individual oh, showed no. up. <laughs> oh yeah. And it was like the worst situation ever. Cause this dude's like six, five and literally I was there by myself. Right. So, you know, what I said to him was, I kind of gave him, uh, well, I gave him like a non-apology apology. Uh, and, and what I apologized for was the hurt that my words caused him and his family. Right. Mm -hmm. And that I was sorry for his loss and that I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. I mean, it's, it's a horrible story. Somebody you knew, somebody you loved, your brother, you know, was killed. That's horrible. And, and you know, I, I felt bad. Um, I felt bad that my words had that type of impact. But really what it was about was in a tragedy such as that, where the only person, unfortunately, to blame is the person that's dead. Um, people tend to try to find someone to place some sort right. of blame on. Yeah, absolutely. And so I realized very quickly that I had become that target to put that blame on. And I, ra I, I didn't want to argue with the guy. And, and you know, he was rather combative with me, and, and I was just – you know, I didn't I didn't play back into it. Did, I expressed my there, sympathy. Did he show up just to confront you or was he there to buy a yes. car or what? No, no. Oh, he, so he, he showed like, up. He like hunted you down. Yeah. Oh, he hunted me down. Yeah. And it was at the end of the remote after promotions had left. So, I, in fact, I think he was sitting there watching them pack the van and so he got kind of me on the way to my car. Is, is yeah, saying. kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of. And, and it, 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 it taught me. And, and from that point forward, I was really reluctant to comment on local stories like that that involved right. private citizens yeah. because I, I realized, you know, when, I, when you're sitting in a studio, I, I, like I said, my first reaction was, who shoots themselves while trying to clean their gun? Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> like, which, which, and you admitted it, Eric, like that was the first thing that went through your head too. Right. You know, and that's unfortunately though, the answer is a lot of people. It's yeah, like, yeah. that's unfortunately the answer. You know, well, like I said, if you if you have a problem shooting yourself while cleaning a gun, maybe you shouldn't own guns. Um, right. And that's the that's literally the comment that I made. Right. And it, it morphed to this whole, you know, how dare you? And, you know, our family hates you. And, and it just they I, I realized very quickly in that day that I was put in a position where I was being asked to accept a whole bunch of grief. And so I took it and, you know, he didn't raise his fist at me. There was nothing else that happened from it, but it, it taught me that 
you know, words do have consequences. Right. And especially when it comes, even if it's a news story, even if it's like splashed on the front page, every newspaper, or television newscast everywhere, if it affects people in your local community personally, you have to tread very lightly on that. Yeah. Now, conversely, um, I was never shy uh, when it came to criticisms of local elected officials like the or, former or sheriff. Officers. Yeah. Well, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> go ahead. Let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about those officers. <laughs> he, was, he, was, yeah. he was very pro. He was very pro. No, you were, yeah. And you know what, though? I will say the one thing and the reason I think that that it, it, most of the guys on the department listened to your show even was because you never made it personal. There was yeah. never a personal attack. It was never this no. person is a bad person. You no. know, or anything like that. It, 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 m most of my criticisms with the police um, were, was well directed, yeah. were directed yeah, at the was. administration, not, not the cops on the beat, the administration, right. like said, well the deserved. chiefs, yeah. the yeah. sheriff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I had a very well publicized feud with the former sheriff of Stark County. Yeah. Uh, rightfully so. He was a double dipping scumbag. Yeah. And, and let me so let me just throw this out there real quick, just as a as a disclaimer. He is talking about the old sheriff who currently. Oh, yeah. I'm actually, yeah. I'm actually a huge fan of our current sheriff. So let me ask you this, then. And, you know, to, to kind of relate this to our, our listening audience and everything. So I'm, I'm just going to kind of roll through and, and we'll start with attorneys. And then, uh, Mike, I want to get to police officers and I'll comment on, on the experts, but let's talk about attorneys for a second. One, they have really strict advertising guidelines. And so I get that, but, but you're also really versed in this now because now you are doing marketing. And so, you know, attorneys have really, really strict regulated guidelines on how they can, how, what they can post online, how they can advertise, what they can say. Like they can't say like, you know, I'm the best attorney and they, make like, no they, claims. Right. That's what we always, I mean, because I, I've done, you know, my, my talent, you know, with, with what I feel my most talent the most talented aspect of myself is, is a strategic marketer. So I, I look at things from a strategic point of view and try to build marketing, successful marketing campaigns around them. And, um, you know, I'm in Florida now, which Florida is the land of disclaimers. Um, <laughs> if you are any sort of professional or have a professional license, there are very, very, very intricate, detailed statutes that govern how you can advertise yourself. And in doing medical advertising in Florida, you know, that's the number one rule is you cannot make any claims. Um, yeah. and, and much is the same for attorneys as well. Yeah. So, you know, but I think I watch so many of the of the the posts online and the the videos when they go live and you know and and, and it is it's almost like we're afraid of what's going to come out of our mouths and I, I say are like as in public not me like as an i'm not an attorney um you know but but that's what i always think of and and it makes me Sad, but there's such a of? there's such a there's such a disconnect to it though, because yeah, we've got this cancel culture where if you say the wrong thing on a podcast, you ruin your life. Right, and but, that was a big warning that we got from but, other experts. But log into Facebook, scroll right. through your Facebook feed. It is nothing but <laughs> trash. Right, like if, if Facebook, and and that's that's the the paradox of this entire argument is that. You know, on one respect, we are society has pushed us to to not have opinions and and to be vanilla. But then you go to to platforms like Facebook that are algor algorithmically engineered to mm -hmm. provide the most polarizing garbage to boost right. interaction. Um, and and you know that's for me. <laughs> I don't offend easily, um, but I I actually I deactivated my Facebook for a good six months and I only reactivated it last month. And the only thing that I have posted in the past, I think, eight or nine months is last week, wishing everybody a happy new year. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. And, and so that's that's kind of my thing, though, is like it's OK I think people have forgotten that. Guys, it's okay to have an opinion. Are you going to offend somebody? Maybe. But for the for the same amount of people that you offend, you're the same amount of people are going to agree with you. And, well, and I think see, everybody but, 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 but. 
but the decorum is lost. And right. that's my problem with Facebook because somebody will espouse an opinion uh, in a Facebook status and then you read the comments and right. it's F, F you, F this, <laughs> F your mother. And it just degrades over time. There's no decorum there. Right. And it's just a bunch of shouting back and forth about how my opinion's better than your opinion. That's, that's not right. And I, and mean, I don't know about you, but like me personally, you know, I have a lot of people on my Facebook page and and Twitter or, or Instagram or whatever else my daughter signed me up for. Butterfly. Right. Well, and my daughter signed me up for all this he's, stuff. He's they're, they're, te- they're teenagers. Yeah, she did. Yeah, they're, they're Eric, teenagers. Eric's on you know, TikTok. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, my, my TikTok videos. <laughs> no, that's actually yeah. the, that's the one platform I still just, I don't understand TikTok, but that's okay. I uh, still don't understand Snapchat. So yeah, there you right. Go. And like, it, it took think, me 10 years to understand Twitter. Right. So. Yeah. So, you know, but, you know, my, my thing on that though is like, I have so many people on there that have differing opinions than mine. And that's what I love. I love my friends who are different than me. And and Mike will attest to this. Trust me when I tell you, you don't want a world full of Eric Browns running around. I barely want one. Right. Exactly. Nobody wants one. I mean, not even my wife, you know, (laughs) uh, so, but no, you know, so I don't want, a, a Facebook feed or a, a Twitter feed or anything full of people that think like me, act like me, talk like me, dress like me, everything else. I, get it. I want people that are different because I respect their opinions. I respect the the right that they have to have an opinion as long as we can keep it civil. Yeah. You, you, you have your right to an opinion and I have the right not to agree with your opinion, but right. that doesn't mean that I have the right to personally attack you for your opinion. Exactly. And, you know, and so that's one of the big things I think, you know, with, with the, with the police officers that are listening to the show and Mike, tell me this, right. How many times have you heard? And and the biggest one is when we go to Planned Parenthood and we get called there for the protesters out front. Right. And they write all sorts of obscene things on the signs. And and I'm not talking about whether you agree with them or disagree with them. That's not what we're talking about. What I'm talking about are the protesters that are out front and you've seen them. I guarantee everybody's driven down the road and you see them with the, with the F bomb written real big on the signs and all this stuff. Right. And we're like, dude, you got to take these signs down. And they go, well, that's my freedom of speech. And we're like, well, that's not really what the first amendment gives you. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, you know, and it, that's the whole thing because people are so backwards. You know, people think everybody's a constitutional scholar nowadays, which I've right. Yeah, hilarious. you got your Facebook constitutional oh, yeah. degree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The fact yeah, if, of the matter I is, think the, if the, you're the, if you were a lawyer that went to actual law school to learn about the Constitution, I think you threw your money yeah. away. You should have just got on Facebook for a yeah, month. Yeah, just get on Facebook. <laughs> You'd have the been whole thing about the yeah. the whole thing about the First Amendment is Congress shall make no law. Right. Okay. Congress shall make no law. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to think that you're an asshole. Okay. (laughs) Right. And, and the court of public opinion is much different than the court of law. And, you know, some can argue worse, um, you know, especially if you're if you're higher profile Um, and and the whole thing about rights in general and and. COVID for me has has brought up a whole nother level of this. Your rights are limited to where they begin to infringe on my rights. Right. Exactly. Okay? You know, so you want to go around without a mask on because that's your right. And for some reason, you don't have a problem wearing shirts and shoes in stores or wearing a seatbelt. But suddenly a mask is a bad, horrible infringement <laughs> on a your motorcycle rights. helmet or, you know, or a motorcycle yeah. helmet. Well, I live in Florida. We don't have a helmet law. Oh, there you um, go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you don't you don't have a problem with that, but it's all right. You know, because me, look at me, I'm the picture of perfect health, right? Yeah, no, I'm about <laughs> 60 pounds overweight. It's like the COVID 60. I've got high blood pressure. <laughs> I smoke cigarettes. I have pre existing conditions. I don't know if I'm going to be one of the 98% of people if I get COVID, it's going to be fine. Or if I'm going to be one of the 2% of people that get COVID, it's going to end up on a ventilator in an ICU. I don't want to roll that. The, the, I don't want to roll that dice. Yeah. So, you know, you want to walk around Walmart next to me. With Without a mask on, you're claiming that that's your right. You don't need to wear a mask. Well, you know, what about my right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that you're infringing on because you don't want to wear a mask? That's yeah. what infuriates me about, you know, these constitutional scholars that like to throw, well, it's my First Amendment right. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
you know what? Freedom of speech isn't it, it, for, it, freedom of speech doesn't give you the right to be obscene, and right. that's and not you're, you're, yeah. And, and that's and that's what that's we try to the, explain to them is that you're right that, to talk, that's one speak of the, out against the government. <laughs> that's one of the canons of the FCC broadcast law of 1934, the Federal Communications Act of 1934, is that speech is free unless it is obscene and then it is not free because you're infringing upon the rights of other people with those obscenities. But so what, but what you might consider obscene, I might not. So if I'm walking, true. if I'm walking if I'm walking next to you in Walmart, I got my little mask on so you're happy about that, but I have a shirt on that might have some offensive writing that you consider offensive, I don't. So where do you draw the line at? Well, and that's the problem. Mike is like one walking offense. Well, I don't care. Oh, yeah, I like, have no clue. <laughs> well, but, but here's the thing with me. Like, I'm all about freedom of expression. And if you want to wear something, if you want to have tattoos or jewelry, or if you want to have something on your shirt, whatever, go for it. It's your right. Now, if you're walking around with a swastika on, I'm going to think you're a Nazi. <laughs> and that's my right. <laughs> but isn't that's that, my right. But isn't that my right to wear that swastika <laughs> on my shirt, which I would never do. So don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, no, no. You, he knows but me better. This is what I'm, but I'm, this what I'm saying. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Where It is certain. But this is this is what my point is. God, this it is, is, this is one of the shows I wish we could do live. So we had callers calling in to comment on this. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure there, I'm sure we'll have more in the future. <laughs> you are certainly within your right to I'm walk around. To <laughs> with, with your swastika, yeah. Somebody got retired from the police department. Now we can talk about where. Right? Yeah, I was like, around. yeah, you can tell. Yeah. He's like two days out the <laughs> yeah, door, and all of a sudden, I, I had to keep it bottled in for twenty five years. Now, right, now. right. Let's go smoke <laughs> some weed and wear our swastikas. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. So you, you have, like I said before, you have the right to walk around with your swastika, but I have the right to look at you as an asshole for You're wearing right, your you do. exactly. Um, you know, uh, we've we've gotten to the point in society where I think a lot of us think that we're owed something. Yes. And I'm sure as former police officers, you guys yeah. both, I've, you guys very, see that I'm on the front line. Entitled, entitled no, I've, I've actually, I've never run into anybody like that. Oh, ever. You're right. Yeah, yeah right. Uh -oh. World owes you something. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, you know what? We all have, we all have the right to go elsewhere. Um, and I've, as I've gotten older, I've learned to, I, I kind of look at it as a blood pressure management strategy. Uh, and rather than get all upset, um, I just remove myself from situations. So, right. um, you know, I, I, I think that, I think that that's something that could be learned from this whole discussion as a whole is that we're not always going to agree with each other. We really need to learn how to be more civil with our disagreements. Yeah. Um, and just because we might not agree with the same things doesn't make me any more right or you any more wrong. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's this this entitlement that people have is that I have this opinion, but it's not an opinion because it's a fact. And it's it's the only fact that can be. And so if you don't have the same opinion, there's something wrong with you. Right. That's never how I uh, would kind of ringmaster my discussions on the air. I would never do that. Well, and um, I think there's a big difference. And people have lost the definition of acceptance versus tolerance. Right. Because now everybody goes, well, I have an opinion and you have to accept it. Right. I mean, how many times did you run into that on the road or, or you know, do like how, many, how well, much the, did you run the, into the, that? The, right? the, I have an opinion. You have to accept it. I don't have to the, accept it. Right? The other I big to, I have to be the, tolerant the other, of your opinion. The other, the other big problem, and, and I attribute this to um, the way that television cable news uh, has become. And, and it's on both sides not just Fox News, it's Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, all of them. Um, we have become conditioned to believe that opinions are fact. Right. And, and that <laughs> – there's a big difference between opinion and fact. And you I didn't think know that, that Anderson Cooper literally is the new Wikipedia. 
<laughs> That's a prime example. With, listen, Wikipedia is a prime example. People go to Wikipedia like it's some sort of gold standard in fact. Right, but anybody, any, anybody, anybody can edit, edit it. it. Right. Yeah. right, 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 right. So, you know, we have a real problem. And I guess this kind of sums up the entire discussion today. We have a real problem in this country with truth and authenticity. And I think a lot of us, and like I said, I, I, the media has to share some blame for this because it used to be, you know, growing up, I would always watch Peter Jennings would watch the ABC nightly news. And it was just a straight reading of the news without any opinion whatsoever. Well, now you've got opinions. Um, so you can have a, a, a scientist uh, on one side of a discussion, talking about global carbon emissions and um, you know the, the the rise of sea levels scientifically, like proven fact, and then you have somebody on the right side saying, and I'm just meaning on the right side of the screen, not right, right yeah, not, side, not right or left of the aisle. You're talking, yeah, about yeah, yeah but you but yeah. you have you have somebody you have somebody that comes in and goes, no, those aren't facts. No, that's not true. And then suddenly, a fact based argument becomes opinion based. Yeah, we don't know the difference between fact and opinion anymore. And, you know, people on Facebook are guilty of this all the time. They state things as if they're fact when, in fact, they're really opinions. So if you go in the comment thread and you offer up a different opinion, then you are crucified because, well, no, you have an opinion. I have a fact. No, it's it's the people. Everybody is a constitutional scholar. <laughs> Everybody is their own Wikipedia. Nobody uh, is wrong. Nobody can admit that they're wrong anymore. Um, and and you know what? If if there's a difference of opinion about something, the mask wearing is a it, it's a perfect analogy for this. Yeah. Eric, you're you're you and your wife aren't big mask wearers. Me and my wife are. I don't look down on you for the fact that you don't wear a mask. Right. Well, like I, I, said, I don't and, think any less of you for that. I, right. I mean, I could, I could say some things to you about it, but that's my opinion. And right. sometimes it's best to keep your opinion to yourself. Yeah. You know, and that's just it. And like I said, I mean, and if we came to Florida and we come over and go out to dinner with you guys, guess what? We're going to put masks on because we know that that's what you guys would like. And so We're gonna, a, a long, you know, a, a lot can be accomplished from this. And so courtesy, it, courtesy, yeah, yeah. courtesy. <laughs> right. And so like, it's okay to have your own opinion and be polarizing and stand by your own opinion and stand on your own feet, but be respectful right. of other yes. people. Yes. You know, and realize, you know, one, one of the biggest things is a lot of things we have a tendency, especially I think in the past five or six years, we have a tendency to think that everything is black and white. Okay. Uh, and, and, there's a lot of shades of gray between those two colors yeah. and, and not everything is as cut and dry as we'd like it to be. I think for argument's sake, we tend to try to oversimplify things and, you know, going back to the story about the football player that shot himself while cleaning his gun. Um, you know what, to me at the time it was black and white. Hey, if you don't have, if you don't know how to clean a gun, you shouldn't own it. And, and you know what, I still stand by that. But now I know that there's gray in the middle of that. It's not quite as black and white as I had wanted it to be because the words that I said had a negative effect on a grieving family. Yeah. And that was not that was not something that I intended to happen. And, you know, the, the real thing of it is, and I think this is where people go wrong with this whole polarizing conversation where I say you need to be a human. Computers, robots are black and white. They are yes and no. You know Zero's what I mean? Like that's it. Those are the only two inputs. People yeah. can operate in the gray and the gray is where the greatest, that's where the greatest uh, amount of emotion lies. Like think about on the police level, the great police stories that you hear are, you know, a mom who's, who's struggling, laid off, whatever. She's shoplifting from Walmart and the cop shows up. Was she shoplifting? Yeah. Was she wrong? Yeah. Should, did she break the law? Yeah. You know what I mean? But the cop turns around and buys all of her groceries that she was shoplifting for her kids. Right. Right. Like that's where the greatest moments lie in life. And so, you know, I think as, as attorneys, as, as your insurance claims adjusters, as, as police officers who are charged with this to go out into the public and interact with them, 
you guys need to be cognizant of that. And you, well, yeah, I, I, th- there's not much of a difference. I mean, you know, any sort of public interaction, <laughs> it's it's all the same. Whether you're sitting behind a microphone doing a morning show, or whether you're you know uh, a cop on a beat that's having to interact with the public on a daily basis, there is all there. Sh- there should always be, especially nowadays, that extra layer of dealing with situations so that they have the least amount of future impact on you. Yeah. Um, be, because, you know, words matter. Um, and I, I think that, that sometimes people twist words and situations for their own good or to grind their own axes. Um, and, you know, with, with social media, especially, uh, you, I know this guy that um, he owns an insurance business, um, health insurance business, and he is um, very, 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 very right wing. And on his personal Facebook and in a whole bunch of groups. Now, mind you, his Facebook profile is his name. His insurance company is also his name. Okay. Um, he's a after the election he called for kamala harris to be shot like publicly put that out there and i'm just like i I, from a marketing standpoint i'm like what is wrong with you yeah and so when i say it's okay okay to be polarizing that's not what i'm talking about no 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 no, no. i mean and that's what i'm saying is you you have to be cognizant you know especially if, if you're dealing with the public or if you are a business owner you have to be cognizant i um I, my my last um, business venture, um, my partner and I ended up splitting. And one of the main reasons that we ended up splitting up was his. So let me tell you a story. Uh, we I started the first medical marijuana clinic in the state of Florida. No, there's a shot. Which is Luca? Which Luca and weed? The, the, the radio guy, right? Yeah. So uh, I had a friend of mine that was a retired doctor with an active medical license. Was looking at working at Med Express for sixty five dollars an hour and filing for bankruptcy. I told him after the law passed in uh, 2016 here in Florida, we should put a clinic together. He said, "How do we do that?" I put it together and build it. Um, one of the things that ended our business partnership. Um, Florida is a very Republican state. Don't have to tell you that. Um, uh, Our both houses of legislature and our governor, all red, all Republican. Uh, I am more liberal. Doesn't shock many people that know me. Um, But you know, one of the actually, things I would think you were more independent, but go ahead. I, I would agree. Well, I, I technic- technically I'm non-party affiliated. Yeah. So and yeah. my, my wife is kind of on me about that. And she's like, well, why aren't you like, why are you like a Democrat or like a Republican? And I'm like, because I don't want to be defined by that. OK, yeah. I look at issues differently. I'm non-party right. affiliated. Um So, you know, there was a lot of advocacy early on. I went to Tallahassee. I went to the state house um, and walked the floors and I talked to senators and representatives and I was advocating for a cause. Well, my business partner began to advocate for candidates, in particular, Democrat candidates in blood red Sarasota County. Uh, And started using the business to host fundraisers for these particular Democratic candidates. And, well, I agreed on a personal level that these particular candidates might have been a better fit than the idiots that we had in Tallahassee. I wouldn't dare allow the business. My my view of it, and I told him this, the business needs to remain politically neutral. We can advocate for issues all day long. You want to advocate for, you know, um, expanded access to marijuana for medical conditions? Go ahead and do that. But don't start telling people in your exam room that they need to vote for Andrew Gillum for governor. Don't do that. Right. And it ended up into a gigantic argument where he told me to get my stuff and get out of his clinic. And that spiraled into a lawsuit that's still going on to this day. Um, and I think that you yeah, remember you. 
Congress shall make no law prohibiting speech, <laughs> but that doesn't mean the court of public opinion won't. So I was always very careful, uh, and I, I still am careful as a marketer, that I watch how things are phrased and how things are done because I'm thinking in my head, how can this go bad? Right. Yeah. Well, and so, you know, the nice thing is being on a podcast full of attorneys as the audience, um, you know, for any of the attorneys, if you want to take the Lucas case uh, for this loss, <laughs> you shoot me a minute. <laughs> no, I actually, I, I have, You're gonna have I attorneys have a, just beating down your door now. They're all going to be lining up. <laughs> well, I have, a, you know, it's so funny with me. We talked about this before the podcast started. So I was, Oh, look at that breaking news. Twitter locks Trump's account. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so, um, you know, my my first radio job, I was there for 10 years. Number one in the ratings, 30 shared, 12 to dead. Um, <laughs> dead. <laughs> my uh, my general manager who locally owned station, um, our contract was set to expire. He was all upset that I exercised the clause in my contract to allow for a lawyer to negotiate on my behalf, the new deal. I wasn't asking for any more money, particularly I was uh, wanting ownership of my material. And uh, when the contract expired, he refused. So my lawyer told me, you know, advised me not to sign the new contract. So I didn't sign the new contract, but we offered to sign an extension. The station said no. So two weeks after the best ratings book in my career came out, I was fired. My lawyer said, go to Guitar Center and buy as much audio equipment as you can. In two weeks time from when I was kicked off the air, I built a studio in the third bedroom of my house I and I started, yeah. I started in 2012, I started what was called the DSN, which was a web-based and app-based internet streaming station. And we started streaming my show from my house, um, <laughs> you know, two weeks after I was thrown off terrestrial air. And, um, the station sued me for torturous business interference um, and demanded $250,000 for breach of my non-compete. And it went to court and we successfully argued that a terrestrial non-compete didn't have any standing for digital only material and the court found in our favor. And so DeLuca versus DA Peterson is now a legal precedent that has been used by several other media baseball, personalities. Right. That's amazing. <laughs> That's got a little face law. It's great. And it, it's, it's, I, I always manage to, it, it's so funny. Like I, 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 on a very personal level, I've always been very gracious. Um, I always try to operate by kind of the golden rule standard, treat others the way you want to be treated. Uh, I don't think nefariously, like I don't ever try to get one up on someone. Right. Um, you know, I, I try to operate with some sort of um, – <laughs> like uh, ethics, I guess you could say. Um, but what I have found in my professional career, both in radio and post radio, is that um, there's a lot of morally bankrupt people out there. And for some reason, when you come into contact with people that have loose morals or don't really have any integrity whatsoever, and, uh, and, and you end your relationship with them, they tend to try to do whatever they can to destroy you legally. And I'm, I'm now in the second situation of this uh, in my life. I've got an ongoing case uh, that is, that has been dragging out now for two years. Um, it's without merit. The other party won't provide discovery evidence to us because they say that it's protected under some bizarre statute. Um, <laughs> they've issued affidavits and then retracted those affidavits, changed them and reissued affidavits. Uh, our story has always remained the same, but you know, I'm you know, $25,000 in the whole legal defense wise. Um, over how, this how long situation has this been going 
Uh, it's uh, first season and desist. Uh, the first season desist came around January fourteenth of twenty nineteen. The actual case was filed beginning of May of twenty nineteen. So we're coming up on two years. Man, okay, yeah. So I mean, this is an ongoing thing in my life. Like you know, it. Uh, my I was going to say for somebody who's got as much integrity as you do, you should. You seem to always <laughs> have controversy surrounding you. Well, it's I say people are like threatened by me, and I don't really understand it. Uh, WDJQ sued me because they were threatened by the fact that I took my talent that I was born with. Oh, it sounds like LeBron. <laughs> I took my talents to South Beach. No, no, no. I mean, both this situation with my former business partner and the situation with the radio station are very similar in that these people. In the case of the radio station, the radio station, in the case of my former business partner, my former business partner, think that they have some claim to what's in my head. Right. And yeah. I won't stand for that. Like, you don't own me. Right. <laughs> Leave me alone. But, the and I'm not just, is, but but it's funny, though, that you word it that way, though, just because didn't LeBron take his talent and go to Florida? He did. And DeLuca took his, took talent, his talent and went to Florida. To Florida. <laughs> and, and where's LeBron now? Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> not in Florida. <laughs> right. And that's that's where I hope to be in a couple of months. Not in Florida. <laughs> you, you know what? You know what gets me? I've I've met both of your former bosses, Bus business people. Yes. Yes. I've I've met them both, and they both come off as being um, well spoken, educated. They they to me they seem like they would also be full of integrity. It's just. I don't know. It's just weird to me how they're not what they come off as being. Because it comes back to the uh, the authenticity. Authenticity. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. see, with with me, my mother, uh, anybody that has ever known Barb, my mom, uh, Lovely knows. Woman, by the way, they know where this comes from with me because my mom. It's it's so weird. Like uh, so. The DeLuca side of my family is a gigantic Italian family. Um, most of them are backstabbers and liars and fake. Okay, so you know they're nice to your face, but then when you walk away, they be, 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 be about you. My mom's side of the family is Irish English, actually Irish English Scottish, and it's not quite as big of a family. And they always call a spade a spade. Yeah, it's like you, and, you'll know exactly where yeah. you stand with them. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's never a question with the Brennan side of the family. And that's where this personality, you know, has come from. Yeah. And and my, my mother, um, it, it seems that people that are genuine, people that are authentic, and this this quite possibly is the tragedy of all of it. People that are authentic and genuine have a harder time in life than those who are more chameleon-like that can change their opinions and change their motivations and change their ideals based upon personal situations and gain. Um, my mother uh, is a mechanical engineer. And so she, she's now retired, but in the 80s and 90s was working as a mechanical engineer for several very large companies. And most of the people around her were men, were male engineers. And anybody who knows an engineer, I mean, God, you guys in the crash business, you know your engineers. I was going to say engineers. 90% of my listening audience right now are all engineers. So just FYI, so that you're about to be polarizing, I have a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> engineers are very, very interesting people. Um, and a lot of them can be a little quirky sometimes. But in my mom's case, she ran into a lot of resistance um, I'll tell you one story in particular. Uh, she used to work for Electrolux in North Carolina, Frigidaire Dishwasher Division. And she was a quality engineer. And she found out that on one of the new models, this is 10 years ago, she found out on one of the new models of Frigidaire dishwashers, there was a problem with one of the control boards inside of the dishwasher. Well, rather than issue a recall, the engineers were going out to the factory floor after hours and soldering parts onto the logic boards. <laughs> 
And that horrified my mom because rightfully so, if anybody bought one of these dishwashers and it failed during the warranty period and they took the dishwasher apart, well, the board's been altered. So the warranty's right. void. Yeah. Right. She took this to her superiors and they fired her. Yeah. And, and that was, I'll never forget that. It's like, you know, you, she, she did what she's supposed to. She's a quality engineer. She noticed a major issue with quality. She took it to the higher ups and one would think like somebody thinks like me would be like, Hey, thanks for bringing this to my attention. Right. Engineers. Why are you going down to the factory floor at night, soldering parts onto control boards? She got fired. She stirred the pot. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and so. Yeah. That, dude, that's great. I mean, that's unbelievable. Maybe we, maybe we shouldn't be authentic. Maybe. <laughs> maybe right. We yeah. Maybe we should all just eat tofu. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah. there, there we go <laughs> or or you know tofu one week and then when tofu falls out of hotness exactly. maybe something else like quinoa or, you know or fish it has to be something sustainable anymore though uh, yes wild, and, yeah. and, and the last i heard cows are, cows are ruining the environment from the last i heard or the ozone yeah there's so mistake. much you know there's there's so much wrong you should just have me back every week just to talk about things wrong well and so that that, that 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 brings that brings up my point so here so we're going to wrap up our show because we i actually, could do listen we, i could we, do a whole show on free range chicken Okay. <laughs> right. I love it. Or what about, what about, so like, I don't know if you watch Conan O'Brien, right. But like he, his whole Thanksgiving skit, he did the one where he went to the, to the Tofurky farm and they were, oh, yeah. they were free range Tofurkies all running around the farm. <laughs> and the way that they captured them was by dropping pianos on them. <laughs> and, nice. uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. So were, I think, they, were they hormone free too? I don't, you know, I, I think so. I don't know. We, we'd have to check, but no. So here's what we're going to do. So uh, one, I want to wrap up our show because we, we just absolutely crushed our time frame. but that's okay. I think this show was worth it and it's super entertaining and I, I, I loved having you on here. Um, so one, uh, I just kind of want to go around the, the board here and give everybody their final thoughts for our audience. Um, and so, but DeLuca, I'm going to let you go last because you're our guest. And so you get to wrap oh. up the show as our special. Well, I, I don't even know if anything I said today makes sense. So you you're going to entrust me with the wrap up yeah, now? Like, how's yeah, that going to work? Yeah, I'm putting the okay. pressure on because you're actually the professional here. So, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm retired. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. I, I'm, re I'm retired. So Mike. Hey, hey, so, <laughs> yeah, Mike and I are retired now. I, I yeah. am retired. I, right. I, I can officially take the filter off again. Right. Um, I don't know what you want me to say, man. I'm retired. I have no well, here's, So, here, here, this is my thing, right? So, for I all I can't even see his. His face is behind the windshield over there. Like oh, I just I know, see this right? headless torso just kind of bobbing around. There. <laughs> I know he's hiding behind it's, the microphone. It's, it's where he has me yeah. sitting. I'm, Mike, I'm either in his lap or I'm behind the mic. I know. I tried to get him to sit on my lap and he wasn't having it. I thought that I would make. Way, I, thought, listen, I thought that would make the video episode way more entertaining. The, there was I'd talk. To somebody though. That's true. There was talk at the end of my radio career about you know incorporating video into like streaming, and I'm like, no, I'm still like, it's so much easier just to talk into a microphone. Yeah, you don't have. I mean, you can dress like trash. You don't have to shower. People have no <laughs> idea. It's wonderful. I don't know right. where this video thing came from. Yeah, right. So no, but here, so. But, to, to wrap this up for everybody and kind of to, to caboose the whole conversation that we just had. So I'll, I'll, you know, I'll kind of kick it off to the, to the expert side of things and the other reconstructionists and the engineers that are listening. And, and, you know, so listen, guys, here's the thing. I got a ton of pushback. Me and Phil both did when we started this podcast because everybody's like, Oh my God, you can't put your opinions out there because what if, what if somebody thinks this or what if somebody thinks that, and you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm at a point you know in my funny, career you, where you know what the funniest you know what the funniest part about that is. What does every lawyer in the country do professionally? They write opinions, right? Well, and that's what <laughs> experts do. That's what they literally pay us for. They pay You're us writing opinions for our exactly. opinions as an expert witness. And so, but you can't have an opinion, no. but, right. you, but, but you write opinions. Right. And so guys, that's okay. And just like I said, you know what? I get it. My company is not the right cup of tea for every attorney. Just like every attorney is not the right cup of tea for us. I mean, we were very clear from the get go that we will always tell the truth of what happens in a crash. P 
period, end of story. We don't make up. As you should. Right. As you should. Right. But unfortunately, (laughs) unfortunately, that's not the case. There are companies out there that will twist the facts and and kind of stretch the science. Names? And no, we're not getting into names. Uh, No names. But me and Phil have said from the day, from day one. That's terrible. We will do this ethically. 100%. That's terrible. Right. 100% of the time. Terrible. That is terrible that, that crash reconstructionists can 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 obscure, obscure fact, alter fact, just you know, who that, that's right. all about it. I mean that's, that's wrong. Right. That is, that's wrong. And so this brings me to my second closing piece, FYI. And this is my special closing piece. So you guys need to comment below this so that we I can turn around and show this to DeLuca. You know, the in 2021, we want to bring the live show on Fridays, Friday afternoons or something, you know, as you guys are getting off work. Uh, DeLuca, I think you need to be part of this live show. I think you need to be my co-host on that because Phil. I'll Kate do it. I'll so. do it. I haven't left the house in eight months, so <laughs> yeah. I'll be here. You know, I'm just saying, I think we could we could get ourselves into all sorts of trouble on the live show and take some call-ins from the attorneys. I think that'd be a ton of fun. <laughs> you know, I, I will say I will let me let me just say this. Um, one of the reasons that I uh, radio is my first love, always will be. But over the course of the past year, I realized that I couldn't do it anymore. I, I couldn't work professional radio the way that I wanted to. I couldn't be authentic. Um, and to me, that's important. I miss that. I miss having a discussion of opinions, even if they're misguided opinions, even if we're just you know making jokes here and there. I miss doing that. And I miss hearing from phone callers. And I miss having those kind of discussions. And one thing that's universal about local radio, um, I know that this is the way it is down here, and I imagine it's the same in Canton. If you turn on a morning show, it's the same vanilla garbage on right. every station. Yep. Nobody is talking about real issues. Nobody is you know, putting opinions on the air and letting other people opine on those opinions. There, these discussions aren't happening anymore. And I really think that they're necessary in society. We need to, we need to bring it to the people. I'm telling you. Yes. And, and it would be entertaining anyway, because you and I are actually on polar opposites of many opinions. So I, oh, yeah. I, think, oh, yeah. I, think, yeah. I think we, I think we would have some pretty uh, entertaining conversation, <laughs> but I, I think that that's important. And yeah. I think that it's, especially in this day and age, I think it's important that people can hear two people with differing opinions that can still get along with each other and still be civil. Yeah. yeah. I think that that teaches a very right. good lesson. Yeah. So, all right, Mike, tell the police as a retired officer, somebody who successfully have navigated 25 years <laughs> at an inner city department that I'm not going to lie. And DeLuca back me up on this, a department that is Want you to be a robot. Huh, mm, no, I was going to say embroiled in controversy. <laughs> half the scandal time. after scandal, <laughs> after scandal, but, and like, like, the, like the chief of police putting tracking devices on his daughter's boyfriend's cars and all that other <laughs> crazy stuff yeah i was there for that yes yeah so right so what advice do you have to these officers because they're listening to this and they're going you know what i absolutely cannot have my own opinion because i'm going to get fired but dude for 25 years that i've known you because you were in the hiring class right before me you had an opinion on the street uh, you had an opinion on every call let me ask let me ask this because mike you you were with the sheriff's department for how many years before the, uh, the about three i worked in the sheriff's department for about three and a half years before i came to canton so you know during my 15 year radio career mm-hmm. i noticed things change how much have things changed you know in in policing um, since you began oh my god it's been a crazy. lot a lot i feel like they they've taken the um ability to use discretion away they want you to be a robot um we me and eric talked about this before you just don't you don't have the ability to use discretion anymore um everything has to be one way again zero you can't, tolerance policies yep it, pretty much yeah yeah, yeah. M- my advice would be can anybody just start and get out find another career <laughs> <laughs> okay let's say they they are determined to stick this so out. they're already at their five-year marks yeah. and now they're stuck yeah they're stuck. okay <laughs> um my advice would be to lay low, um, do your job. Don't go out and try to play cowboy. You do that, no. you end up in internal affairs. It's going to just, yeah. it's going to, it's going to create waves. You're going to end up in lawsuits. Um, just do your job. 
keep your head down, lay low, and just remember there's cameras everywhere. And um, but, body but, cameras, video cameras, cameras on the building up there in that corner, that corner. But um, on that though, but so be much. a person. No, yeah, I agree. You gotta you, you gotta be a person. Let me, um, let me let me say let me let me say this because like from a radio perspective, it's the tale of two departments. So uh, WDJQ is in a city called Alliance, Ohio. <laughs> I never got along with the Alliance police. Never. As opposed to the Canton Police Department, I always got along with you guys because you guys were always people. Right, uh, yeah. Mike. You, I've known you for years. Jeez. You, you, you're you, the best man in my always, wedding. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, you've always been personable to me, Eric. I've known you for years. Samuels, I've known. I've known a lot of the Canton cops, and every single one of them was like relatable, like right, yeah. relatable, like treated. You know didn't, most most of the guys that we well, when I say we, Eric used to work work with me. Most of the guys we work with are, are good people. So, all right. So, Pat, take, take us home. Wrap this up. Tell everybody, what's the secret? Because you made it a long, long time. Having an opinion, being authentic, and probably being the most relatable radio personality I had ever listened to. And, and actually, I, to honest to God, and not to blow smoke up your ass or anything like that, but since you left, I have never listened to the morning show ever again. No. Ever. Because, because nobody's relatable. They're just well, they're tofu. I don't listen to the radio anymore either. Um, and and if I want music, I'll you know put on Pandora or Spotify or you know I I, I the radio is dead. And the reason but, that radio is dead is because the personality has been removed from it. Right. And so so how do you put how do you successfully put content out? Because that's what the attorneys are trying to do. The experts are trying to do. All these people you're trying to put content in front of people to get them to listen to you and recognize you as the expert in your field that you are and stuff like that. So how do they put content out? Have so the, be relatable, but not offend people. The secret with radio that I always preach to management, they never listened, was that in order for radio to survive, you have to give people something they can't get anywhere else. And I think that that could probably be translated to almost anything else. So, uh, you know, if, if you're an attorney, look at what your competition's doing. Look at what they're doing well. Look at what they're not doing well and capitalize on those opportunities. Same thing, you know, across the spectrum, no matter what you're doing in terms of in terms of marketing, um, in terms of being authentic, um, you know, saying things just to say them or saying things just to get a reaction, um, I don't think play very well in the long term. Um, I, you know, I don't get me wrong. I would, I would, I would say reactionary things all the time, but they weren't opinions. They were dumb little jokes or sound effects, or that's you know, right. um, there, there was always a certain level of irreverence with my show because that's the way that I wanted it. Um, but you know, respect people, respect people's opinions, and you know, the the thing about freedom of speech. Going back to that. Um, the freedom of speech that needs the most protection is the speech that we don't agree with. Um, Damn, that's so, deep. so <laughs> keep that. No, seriously, keep that in mind. I literally um, feel like you have a Ziggy calendar in front of you. You just read that off. <laughs> you just read it off. <laughs> that's, I just look like Ziggy. That's why. Um, <laughs> no, no, that was uh, great. No. Though. I might steal that for tomorrow's Facebook post. No, seriously, it's 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 the truth. The 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 speech that is most endangered is the speech that we do not agree with. So keep that in mind. And not everybody is going to agree with you and nor should they. And you should, you know, and, and I'll be honest, I can't tell you that every opinion that I've ever had was unchangeable. Um, there were several times where I would have an opinion and through discussion and having an open mind, I changed my opinion on the matter. And that's important too. I think that a certain level of open-mindedness uh, and, and really if, if you, if you want to get to the core of the cancel culture and, and this movement of, well, you said something I don't like, so nobody should hear you say anything. It has to do with 
just complete narrow mindedness. And I kind of feel sorry for narrow minded people because I think that if you, you know, you YOLO, you only live once. <laughs> and if you if you walk through your life with a very narrow mind, you are shortchanging yourself from experiences and opportunities that you wouldn't have if you, you know, were a little bit more open-minded. So not everybody has to agree. Sometimes you agree to disagree. Um, not every opinion is a fact and not every fact is an opinion. Well, everyone, that's going to wrap it up for the day. As always, jump over to Facebook and make sure you follow and join Crash Tech, the Expert Angle Group. Also, if you want to leave us feedback, have an idea for a show, or would like to be on a future show, head over to Crash Tech Expert Angle angle.podbean.com and click the link on the right that says contact the show. The form will come up, put anything that you want right in there. If you want more information on expert consulting services or training, visit us online at www.crashtechreconstruction.com. And finally, if you're a PI attorney, make sure you request to join the crash site Facebook group. Or if you're a defense attorney, make sure you request to join the crash site defense Facebook group. Neither site contains any ads or spam. It's just a private community that brings experts from all different areas together with attorneys to collaborate or ask questions. So again, guys, thanks for tuning in. And remember, always leave your accident victims better off than you found them because at the end of the day, everything we're doing is for them. 